Hey Measuring Hero, I'm Anna. Guess where we are today? Today, we came all the way to Stuttgart to the State Museum of Natural History. I'm gonna meet with Jupp Schaefer, a PhD student here at the museum, who is gonna give us a closer look in everything around, so this fantastic place. Come with me and let's get to it. Yup, hi. Hi, welcome, welcome. Thank you very much for having us here today. So this is really impressive. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. you're welcome. We've got a lot of really cool stuff like the skeleton behind me. There's so much cool things. Let, let me show you around. In my opinion, it's one of the most beautiful natural history museums in the world, actually. Mm -hmm. It's focused mainly on local, local specimens from Baden-Württemberg, from the okay. area in Germany that we're at. And it's quite a big museum. We have a, a collection of everything combined, roughly 11 million mm -hmm. objects. Um, and we've got some amazing, amazing fossils here. Yeah, for example, what kind of fossil that you like the most? Here? Well, we have Platyosaurus behind us, okay. a great <laughs> animal. And here, Lilia Sternus, another dinosaur next to us. But we also have other uh, non-dinosaur animals. We have really cool crocodile-like animals. Um, we have a famous locality and famous specimens of ichthyosaur and, and, and crocodiles from there, from Holtzmaden. Mm -hmm. um, we have in the city uh, really cool sites with mammoths. We even have a, an early human from, mm -hmm. the, from the local area. Oh, wow. Um, uh -huh. We've got everything you would want in a, in a, in a naturalist museum. So you also have like this very famous uh, human skull here in the museum, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the Steinheim skull is what it's called. It's from it's a town called Steinheim. It's relatively close mm -hmm. to here. And Can we take a look, a closer yeah, look to yeah, that? Yeah, let's go. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. Aha, so this is the famous Steinheimer uh, skull. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is a skull. It's one of the most famous and valuable fossils we have here at the museum. It's about 400,000 years old. And with that, one of the oldest finds of humans in, in middle Europe. Mm -hmm. And it's really cool. But there's an even cooler skull here in the museum, and that's the one of Platyosaurus. Can you show me that? Yeah, yeah, let's go. Okay. This is the skull of Platyosaurus trossingensis, and in my opinion, the most amazing skull that we have here at the museum. It was excavated in 1911 from Trossinger, a place about one and a half hours south of here, and it's incredibly well preserved. Okay. And I think we also have a scan of that, right? Yeah, yeah, we scanned this at size. So it seems familiar. And what can you tell us about the process of excavating and also preserving the, the bones and also the skull and skeletons? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the fossils are generally very fragile, but here in Trossinger we have the great thing that they're all articulated with the whole skeleton. Mm -hmm. But the person who can tell you best about how this all works is my colleague Isabel Rosin. So let her tell you the details about this. Okay, that will be great. Hallo Frau Rosinen. Hallo. Danke, dass Sie uns hier haben heute. Und ich sehe, Sie haben gerade so ein paar Plateosaurien ähm, Stücke hier mhm. zu präparieren. Also was können Sie uns mehr ähm, davon erzählen über den Präparationsprozess? Mhm. Ähm, was wir hier sehen, das ist ein Plateosaurierbein. Wenn man das aus dem Gelände bekommt, so ein großen Knochen oder mehrere große Knochen, dann ist es in einem großen Gips drin und diesen Gips muss ich dann erstmal aufsägen und mhm. dann präpariere ich das Gestein von dem Knochen herunter. Okay. Mhm. Und das mache ich meistens mit einem ähm, Druckluftstichel. Damit kann man sehr schön das Gestein von dem ähm, Knochen oder von dem fossilen Knochen lösen. Mhm. Und warum ist dieser Prozess von Präparation so wichtig? Das ähm, ist sehr wichtig für unsere Wissenschaftler, damit die genau, genaue Abmessungen zum Beispiel von einzelnen Knochen nehmen können. Mhm. Und trägt das auch bei für den Konservierungsprozess von dem Knochen? Ja, also wenn ich das dann präpariere, muss es natürlich auch imprägniert werden, damit es für weitere Jahre gut erhalten bleibt. Und das mache ich meistens mit einem, ja, mit einem Festigungsmittel. Paraloid nennt sich das. Und dann okay. Denn vielen Dank für Ihre Zeit und jetzt werden wir ein bisschen mehr über die Plateosaurus selber lernen. Dankeschön. Gerne.
So, yep, we are now here in a di very different room. We are not in the museum anymore. So, where is this place about? Yeah, we're in the in the Holtzmaden magazine, which is our storage for specimens, mostly ichthyosaurs and crocodiles from Holtzmaden, a really famous site in Baden-Württemberg with beautifully preserved marine reptiles. Okay. And here I've seen uh, we have already a model of the school. Well, not exactly the school that we've seen upstairs, but a model of a school of a plateosaurus as well. well. It, it, yeah. it is the cast of the skull we saw oh, upstairs, yeah. okay. the exact mm -hmm. same one, uh, but made out of plaster mm -hmm. to preserve the other one because it's very fragile, it can break easily. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't like to take it out of the, the, the case. Mm -hmm. But by having these, we can show people what it's like, Mm -hmm. uh, show people the details of the teeth. There's, there's a lot of different things you can show here without the fear of breaking mm -hmm. the actual skull. Yeah, so you mentioned there are some very fragile parts here. So I'm supposing are these ones here? Yeah, they, mm -hmm. they, they break kind of easily there. The, the pterygoid flange is what <laughs> it's called. Mm -hmm. um, so just very thin strips of bone. So even on a model, they break relatively easily. So you still have to be careful. Mm -hmm. But it's not like it's the real skull, so it's all, it's fine. Let's dig a bit deeper into the Platosaurus itself. What can you tell us about this type of dinosaur? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Platiosaurus is a, an early sauropodomorph, mm -hmm. is what it's called. And it's an ancestor of the really big long neck dinosaurs like Diplodocus or Camarasaurus that people often know. Mm -hmm. Um, it was smaller, still not a small animal. It ranged like six meters to 10 meters for adults. Mm -hmm. With a, for that, a pretty small head, long neck, big body, uh, and a long tail as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a herbivore, so it mostly ate plants, well, primarily ate plants. Also can see by the, the shape of the teeth, which are specialized for those kind of diets. And overall, it's a very common dinosaur here in the area in southwestern Germany, with also some sp spots in Switzerland and northern Germany. Mm -hmm. um, and over 200 individuals roughly have been found by now. Okay. Uh -huh. um, not all have been preserved, unfortunately, due to the war. Mm -hmm. Many have been lost, but there's still a very, a very good amount of specimens to, to study. Okay, so it was kind of a common dinosaur here in Europe? Or? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. from, from this period, the, the late Triassic, mm -hmm. um, it was actually, as far as we know, yeah, one of the most common. We've, we've got loads of skeletons, whereas if we look at those sites, there are only a few other. In Frick in Switzerland, next to the Platiosaurus, they find some theropods, some meat-eating dinosaurs, small ones. Mm -hmm. Here in Trossinga, we haven't found any yet. We will, I'm sure, <laughs> but not yet. Um, so yeah, they were like a little bit like, like cows, they're very common, they graze around, at least that's how we see it now. Okay, so Tossinger is like this big site close to Stuttgart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tossinger uh -huh. is about one and a half hours away from mm -hmm. Stuttgart and it's an amazing locality where, where over, well, over 80 almost complete skeletons of this dinosaur have been found, uh, which is incredible, an incredible amount, nowhere, oh, very few places in the world you find that many, that well-preserved dinosaurs. Oh wow. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's really good to be here and to have these, uh, these dinosaurs, these fossils to study. <laughs> and why did you choose uh, the Platosaurus as your uh, area of interest? Yeah, so it's, it's a very interesting animal. As I said, there's a lot of them. We've mm -hmm. got a lot of skeletons. It's been known for since 1837. It was actually the fifth dinosaur to be named that's still valid today. Um, it was the first dinosaur outside of England to get a name. Oh, okay. um, mm -hmm. and, and there's been study, there's been a lot of study, but there's so many questions still that haven't been answered in the past years and even questions, new questions that arose. So with new scientific techniques, there's, there's so many interesting things we can do with this okay. mm -hmm. um, and questions we can answer. <laughs> and what are the challenges when studying uh, this kind of uh, dinosaur or working with fossils um, so in general? Mm -hmm. One problem with fossils generally is that they're fragile mm -hmm. and often irreplaceable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have to be very careful while working with them, uh, especially material here from Trossinger. 
sometimes if you look at it, it just crumbles, it falls apart. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have to have good, really good preparators who take care of the, the fossils. Another thing that's just generally hard or difficult with paleontology or fossils is absolutely something we don't have with this, mm -hmm. is that often you only have one individual of an entire species. Okay. Mm -hmm. So with that, I'm extremely lucky to have already seen about a hundred skeletons of this instead of just one. Mm -hmm. So it is, uh, a lot of the challenges can be overcome. Okay. <laughs> and I've heard also that you used a CT scan from, from Zeiss to, uh, on the, the, the school upstairs mm -hmm. to generate uh, some data. So what was uh, that for? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So for that, of course, we used the real skull, mm -hmm. not this cast. Um, and the, the main goals of that were, uh, well, there are uh, multiple goals. I wanted to have a really good 3D model of the skull. I tried to use other methods before, but they've never really got the inside of the skull mm -hmm. done really well. So a 3D model. Secondly, the skull is very fragile, as I mentioned. So if people want to come and study it, we'd rather leave it in the case, mm -hmm. give them the scans, you know, look at the scans and the models, see what you can do with that. That mm -hmm. would at least many times would save risking the skull by actually taking it out. And for a future project still, we want to be able to, we want to segment out all the separate bones of the skull. Mm -hmm. um, so we can see the other side as well. Here we can on only see the outside, while the inside is just as interesting and might have just as many uh, uh, defining characters of what this is, which differ between different species. Mm -hmm. So that's something we still want to do. We haven't done it yet. <laughs> but it should, should be very possible. So that's something that hopefully a future student mm -hmm. will do uh, for like a master's project. Mm -hmm. And that way do all the separate bones in the scans. Okay. Uh -huh. you, thank you very much for having us today here in the uh, Natural History Museum of Stuttgart. Very welcome. A new major hero. I hope you have learned a lot today as much as I have. Make sure to subscribe and keep tuned for more. Bye bye.